On my public Discord, which you should definitely check out, by the way, plug, plug, Anansi Dragon asks, I see so many popular artists pumping out one to at least a dozen drawings a day, while others and less popular artists put out a piece every few weeks to maybe a month. Does quantity make you a better artist? Uh, yes and no, Anansi. Let me explain. I too have noticed this trend, that more popular artists seem to pump out more drawings more frequently than those who may be considered smaller. But I don't think simply throwing out thousands of drawings a day, obviously exaggerated, but it seems like it, will automatically make you more popular as an artist. Here are a few ways that these are actually planned and executed, whether these artists are doing so consciously or not. 1. Santa Artists some of these artists have found a way to create mass art request templates that are completed in a matter of minutes and grow their account this way. They've created a sketch or a line art template that's easily editable and stick to flat colors rather than fancy shading and are able to pump out free art for their followers this way. I mean, who doesn't like free art, right? The pros to this method is that there's rapid growth, fast turnaround time, and a lot of positive feedback. The cons to this method? Very few of your followers are passionate, loyal fans of your work, and as soon as you start charging for your art, they will leave in a raging huff, or just fall into the e internet ether. You also feel really pressured to create and you're constantly drawing the same thing day in and day out without many opportunities to improve your work, which can get really boring really fast. There are also increased chances of entitled little brats following you, who can't wait for longer than five minutes for the art you're giving them for free. Artist examples of these would be Small Sandwich, and literally any amino artist ever. The second type of artists are called the overachievers. These artists are constantly studying and experimenting with their art and style, slaving over their craft until it's perfected and posting their progress along the way. Everything from sketches to finished paintings line their feed, looking like a glorious, inconsistent mess that you can't believe all came from the same person. Now this is the uh, this is the group I fall into, by the way. <laughs> the pros to this are rapid improvement of your craft and the freedom to express yourself in an authentic way. Your work becomes an invitation for people to join you on your journey and builds a real relationship with your followers creating faithful and loyal fans who will stick with you no matter what you post. The cons? You're never satisfied with your work. Like, ever. You feel the pressure to perform for your audience and you wince when everything isn't just right. Your fan base also grows much more slowly due to an inconsistency and a lack of visual focus. Artist examples of these would be Hopeless Peaches, Nadia XL, and Brooks Eggleston. The third type of popular artists would be the simplifiers. These artists are some of my favorites because they've found a way to have fun with their work while entertaining their audience. Comic artists, meme creators, and a lot of animators fall under this category. This is my personal unicorn art style. The pros to this are that content is easy to churn out, making production smooth and swift and consistent. Everything is recognizable and brandable, balancing quality and quantity. The cons, however, would be that simplifying your work means having to sacrifice detail and letting go of perfection. It requires an ability to not take yourself so seriously, which may be difficult for some. <coughs> Me. <coughs> Artist examples of these would be Lavender Town, Beefish Productions, and Used Band-Aid. The fourth type of popular artists I've noticed are the Da Vinci's. The Da Vinci artist is someone who has been studying art for years on years on years and has refused to produce anything less than stunning or just ridiculously challenging. They've grown their audience by sheer wow factor and nothing else. The pros? You get a lot of loyal fans gorgeous feed that gets all the attention, and you are an inspiration to other artists who are just starting out. The cons? It takes a freaking lot of work, and it takes years to get this good. Your audience also grows a little slower due to only being able to publish a few good pieces within a certain amount of time. Examples of these artists would be Jazza, Emberwick, and Sylvixen. 
The fifth type of artists that I have noticed are the fan artists. And hey, there's no shame in writing the coattails of pop culture. Fan art is how a lot of artists have gotten their start, and many have even succeeded with it. Want a surefire way to catch people's attention? This is how you do it. And now, whether the attention is positive or negative is rather hit or miss, but you'll get it either way. Just beware the fandom trap. I'm still trying to climb my way out myself. The pros to this approach are rapid growth, high amounts of appreciation if you're good, opportunities to catch attention from the creators, or even land freelance jobs for big projects. The cons to this approach would be the dreaded fan art trap. Fans may only be following you for your contributions to the fandom, and getting lost in a crowd of hundreds of other artists who are drawing the exact same thing. Artist examples would be Lightning Bliss, RJ Palmer, and How It Should Have Ended. But what kind of artist are you? Let me know in the comments below. This video is brought to you for free by my incredible patrons, including the epically generous Shepard Shield, Thundernote the Change Pony, Ram Digga Jam, Gigabit the Save Gamer, D Birch, Sharp Wit, Rocky Harmony, and Raven Lead Moon. Join them today by clicking the link in the description below. My love to you all, and I will see you next Friday. Bye!